everybody, welcome. This is our fourth and final module. Um, we're answering questions today. So you guys have sent in some great questions and we've had time to prepare. Both Cher and I have looked at them and come up with our best answers. And I'll just preface this by saying some of the answers we have uh, from direct experience, that either we know this, we've lived this, uh, and some answers we've kind of researched. So we tried to really go to a source um, that would get you what you wanted to know. And so we've done that. We'll make a suggestion based on like best practice out there. Um, we also know that there's two types of questions coming at us right now. One for how do we best teach at home, because you're all home with your kids, and then one for CM for back in the classroom. Something that would have maybe been part of a training that we would have done if COVID had never happened. If only. <laughs> anyway, so we're going to address two of those, like both of those. We're going to first talk to parents at home, and we've got a couple of helpful suggestions there. And then if you want to tap out parents, that's fine. Uh, and then right after that, we'll be talking to CM leaders. So just some ideas for coming back into the classroom. All right. Thanks for joining us today. I'm going to open in prayer. Heavenly Father, I just thank you that we can come to you anytime and that you hear us. I thank you that you've given us the opportunity to be able to do these um, modules. I just thank you for Jill and her willingness to help us and Pastor Evan and his willingness to help us. I thank you for... Um, our church and that they want to pour into families and parents and leaders. So I just pray that this would be helpful. I pray that it would be understandable and I would honor you and glorify you and that we would um, all grow in you, that you would do a work in our lives. Thank you for what you've done so far and thank you for your faithfulness to us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Hooray. Okay, so first for parents at home, we've got a couple of things that we just wanted to talk about. One of the questions that we got, we could start with maybe, is uh, how do I teach such a varied age group? So we, we know, because yeah. we both have four <laughs> kids. Um, mine's 11 and then down to three. So that's kind of a span, and yours are? Yeah, 17 down to 12. So we don't actually do the lessons anymore uh, because Malachi's in junior high. But um, you've been there. We've been there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we had some suggestions because I think that that's exactly what's happening. We're trying to do Sunday school with our kids and, you know, somebody's eating the Play-Doh kind of a thing. And then other kids are really ready to have a great conversation and a great discussion and really get into it. And how do you do both or three or four, right? So we kind of have a couple of ideas. Yeah. So um, we know that obviously most of you will have varied age groups. Some of you will have kids in DLK and some of you will have kids in Truth Seekers and Journey Kids. So... Um, for teaching the older kids, we would start with something simple and concrete. When you have everyone together, it's better to have um, teach something easy to learn. Um, obviously, it will be with, to do with our lesson. But as long as it's something, you know, we're, I'm doing um, the curriculum right now is actually Moses parting <laughs> the Red Sea. So uh, I'm just prepping that curriculum. Um, so what, having a bowl of water or a bucket of water and having the little kids part the water and talk about, we can't do that on our own. Um, the Israelites, Moses and the Israelite, Israelites needed God to part the water for them. They couldn't get through. So that's how that miracle worked and explain that to them. And then, you know, as the little kids get tired of listening and are done playing with the water, then you have a bigger conversation with the older kids about it. So that's something that could be helpful. Um, then another suggestion that we had was repeating the truths two or three times or more during the week. But it's better, repetition is always better. I remember when I was doing piano lessons, <laughs> do your scales five times each every day. I hated it. But I can do them really quickly now. So I think that that's obviously something that we do. We teach our kids that in school, as I'm sure all of you are learning right now. Uh, repetition, repetition. So um, we had someone suggest putting some of the truths on their fridge and then every time they walk by they have a discussion about those and what that means or just saying what the words are so that's helpful too yeah great super great um another thought to kind of go off shara's idea with the parting of the red sea we thought about um the younger kids run out of attention sooner and so we kind of thought about having um if you've got like say three kids at three different age levels get them to bring the bibles that you are reading to them at their level. So you might have a baby Bible, you might have like an action Bible or a story time kind of Bible story Bible, and then a real Bible. And if that's the case, start with the baby Bible and read the story in the baby Bible. And it could be just like 
a picture in two or three sentences, right? Like it's sometimes very simple. But you can have the older kids there for that, explain that to them, talk to the younger kids, and when they run out of steam, just move on. And you can read that story then, like if you're reading it in the Action Bible or like a children's story Bible, um, do that. And then read it in, of course, the Word of God, like the real Bible. And a great question that you can be talking to with the older kids is, if you were going to reduce this story, if you were going to boil it down to the most important points, what would you put in that baby Bible? Like, would you have put what the author put, or would you have chosen something different? Would you have, would you have done an extra page with a little bit more? Um, and it helps kids really to think, but you've hopefully kind of captured your baby or your, your toddler, and then when they run off and start, you know, eating Lego or whatever, um, that's probably not a good idea. No, no. okay. <laughs> Play-Doh is not toxic, it's proven. <laughs> In crayons, also crayons. Yeah, Lego's a choker. But Lego is, is a choker, for sure. <laughs> um, but then also, you can keep up with the, the middle and the older child and just really talk that through with them mm -hmm. and teach the lesson. But don't be discouraged when your young one doesn't have the time or the patience. If you get them for five minutes, you've won the war. Yeah. Like, that's excellent. And if that five minutes is made up of three minutes of singing, that doesn't matter. Like, just that they're there and that they're hearing that God is good, um, that's important. So, Okay. Another thing that was um, brought up was we have heard over the last uh, eight weeks, I guess, different ways in which people are using the CM videos. And we just wanted to share that with you in case you're not using them or if just for ideas. Um, so there's three different ways we've heard of people showing these weekly. So one way was? Yeah, one way that we heard was the families would listen to the music from the main service all together, and then they would send their kids to CM Sunday School. Um, in another room and their kids would watch the videos that we've prepared for the kids as the parents are watching the live portion of adult church. Yeah, which was really cute. They actually mm -hmm. dropped them off <laughs> at CM and we loved that. So that for them was kind of normal yeah. and that they wanted to, they wanted yeah. the kids to feel normal and so they did that. They had the laptop ready and they just pressed the little space bar and then went back to church. <laughs> And the kids sat there. I love it. Um, our kids, I know of a, a bunch of families, are using it as Sunday school. So we have our kids watch it maybe the half hour before, and then they watch big church, whatever, like Pastor Paul and the worship team and stuff. Um, and so they're, we're doing both. Um, and then other families are doing it during the week, yeah. we've heard. So. Yeah, like I, typically I send the, them out on a Friday, and so that gives parents the opportunity to watch it or have their kids watch it on Friday sometime or Saturday or any other time during the week. Maybe they're using it as a midweek program. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's you can use it any way you want. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so parents, if you are not CM leaders and never want to be. No, we want you to be. Oh, I shouldn't have said This that. is all preparation yes. <laughs> for becoming CM leaders. <laughs> Actually, scratch that. Edit, cut. We want you to be CM leaders. But if you want to stop watching now, you can. We're going to be talking about classroom time. Um, we'd love you to stay with us, though, if you want to hear that, too. We might have some helpful things just for your own families as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, so number one question was, why are large and small group leaders so important? Confession, full disclosure, Sharon and I wrote this question. <laughs> This wasn't from a parent. We want to address this question very much. We kind of put it as top of our list. We want you guys to know why you're so important to our program and to the kids' lives. That is because kids need adults that they trust and that they know love them to tell them that God is real. Many of the kids that go to our church will have, or, or I should say go to Sunday school, like go to our CM program. Many of those kids have a Christian parent at least bringing them who's telling them that, that God is real, that God loves them, that he did this amazing thing to secure their salvation. It cost them uh, the, you know, the life of his son. Like Many parents are telling their kids that. Some aren't. Uh, maybe some kids are coming with a grandma or with um, a friend and they don't have Christian parents. Even those kids who have two faithful Christian parents that love the Lord, those kids need other adults in their life telling them, I love you and I love Jesus. Like, I love you and I care about you and I believe that God is real and that the Bible's true. That is so crucial to kids' faith and their faith development. Mm -hmm. 
All the research shows that. And so, I mean, there are lots of great things out there. There are, you know, catchy videos with cute cartoon characters, and they're very, very well produced and well done. And, and they're helpful, they're super helpful. But they could never replace an adult that's in their life that they know and trust, telling them, you can trust God, God is real. And I mean, obviously then the Bible stories and all of that, but that simple message of I love you and I love Jesus and I think he's real, that's critical. That's like, in my mind, I just picture this like heart infusion of faith. That you, they see you week in and out, Sometimes you're there teaching, sometimes they just see you in the foyer upstairs or, you know, in a, some other capacity, you're like the parent of their friend or something like that, but they see you at church every, all the time and you've told them this truth and they believe it because you said it and that is very important. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah, we actually discussed that. Mm -hmm. um, I said, if, you've gone to, if you went to church growing up, you probably have a Sunday school teacher that you remember mm -hmm. that poured into your life. And it's just, yeah, it's super important. It's powerful. Yeah. So we just, you don't have to be excellent at anything. There's, we, none of us are experts yeah. and have great expertise at this. But we just want to love the kids and tell them that it's all true. Mm -hmm. That's it. We need you to do that. So we need you. Um, and you can be good at it or it cannot be your favorite thing. It doesn't matter. <laughs> as long as you're nice that morning and you tell them it's true. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Uh, number two, do you want to read that? Yeah, one? and I'm going to read it because I can't memorize like Jill. So, <laughs> how do I make sure that kids stay engaged during my teaching? Um, we just, as we were talking, um, we wrote down a few points. Um, get down on the floor with the kids. Every time that I've taught with the kids, I have sat on the floor. I know some people aren't able to do that, but you know, sit in a chair, kind of getting down to their level, especially when they're the younger they are, the better. Um, I just think that that helps engage them better. Um, be interactive. Pull them into the story somehow. Get them to, you know, put the flannel people up on the flannel graph or act out part of the story. That's exciting to them. So they need that interaction. Um, it just, it, I think it's crucial to not teach at them, but to t just to share with them is probably a better term for that. Um, make sure your voice sounds exciting. I know when I listen to Pastor Paul, or Pastor Levi, and they get excited about something that they're saying, you get engaged. You want to be part of that. So if they're telling a story, or um, I think I, I wrote something down. Oh, yeah. Um, just like what sparks their interest? Uh, I said sometimes a personal story that relates to what's being taught, like do not steal. <laughs> and I just said, what if, you know, I went to the corner store and I stole a sucker and all of a sudden I'm on my way home and I'm feeling really bad about that. Like, what is that inside of me? That's the Holy Spirit working inside of my heart, showing me that I'm guilty of stealing and broken a commandment. So I think those kinds of things help to pull the kids in and make them engaged. Also when they're sad, you mentioned that, right? Yeah. When, when, yeah. when, when Pastor Paul and Pastor Levi... Yeah. are broken about something, yeah. you feel it. And take notes, like when they're talking, when Pastor Levi and Pastor um, Paul are talking and when you're upstairs and you're listening to them or you're at home, <laughs> in this case, listening to them, I think taking notes and just writing down um, things that helped keep you engaged so that you can apply that to teaching a lesson to the kids is helpful. So, how do I make sure that I don't embarrass a child who has a learning disability? That's a great question. That was actually a question from one of our leaders. That's not something that we came up with. Um, so, first of all, it's helpful if parents can let us know what the learning disability is. I know mm -hmm. typically that happens. Um, usually that's in our system. Sometimes when it's in our system and you have a different oversight person on a Sunday, they forget or they don't know. So sometimes it's helpful if the parent just comes to the classroom leader and says, just so you know, like Johnny's not able to read aloud in front of people because he has a hard time. He has a, a learning disability. He's not able to read. Um, I, I know from experience that that has, has happened. Uh, it happened to my husband actually with his uncle. So it wasn't even somebody he didn't know, but mm -hmm. he was, they were doing a Bible study and he was asked to read aloud. And he was a kid and didn't feel comfortable with that and never wanted to go back to that Bible study because he was embarrassed and he couldn't read mm -hmm. and felt like he was being made fun of. So uh, he wasn't, but I mean, and you realize that as an adult, but it's terrifying. It, it's terrifying. Mm -hmm. So I think making sure that you never center a child out, never say, okay, we are all going to take a verse and read a verse. That's scary to a kid. There are, you're going to have kids that so want to engage and do that 
but allow kids to do that. And if nobody puts their hand up for a reading, just, just carry on, keep going and just keep reading the mm -hmm. Bible. Like I think it's just, we have to make sure that we're not centering anybody out and making them scared. Um, second, a great rule to live by, just ask for volunteers. I just wanna yeah. make sure that we stress that. Like you ask for volunteers and if they're, if they're not engaged in that, that's okay. Don't, don't get upset about that. I think the older they get and the more comfortable they get with a leader, the more they comfortable they are to try something new and try to read aloud or and you, know, you may you may see them when they don't put their hand up to participate or when they don't put their hand up to read you kind of may interpret that as they're not interested or they're I don't want to say they're being bad but just maybe that yeah. they're not interested especially not if some negative behavior goes with that mm -hmm. you may think that you may kind of judge the kid, but really it might be that they are not comfortable reading, uh, they can't, you know, it's something that they struggle with, and that it all kind of goes together, and it's not, they're not bad at all. They're not trying to act out, they're not trying to be defiant in any way. It's just, they're nervous, they're afraid yeah. that that's gonna happen to them, and so that just could be where they're at, so. Yeah. And we wanna make sure that kids always want to come back. So uh, make mm -hmm. it an environment of, we love you again we love you and we want you here so you know just make them feel welcome and safe i know this is uh, <laughs> i've read a book recently um about kids this generation always needs to feel safe they have safe spaces at school and right. every they're very it's a very careful generation so i think we need to be mindful of that that they are used to that sort of thing in school and the other places that they end up so we need to be careful to make sure that they feel safe all the time too. Yeah. We can do it. Yeah. We can do that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> sure we can. <laughs> this is the safest place. And now we come to my question, how do I maintain good classroom control or what are some good classroom management strategies? So that was asked of us. Um, safety goes out the window. Yeah. No, just <laughs> yeah. no, for real. Um, so I would say first and foremost, the environment, the, the kind of culture that you create in the classroom is key and just make or break. So I would say everybody who's an adult who is not the leader talking should be sitting with kids on the floor watching the leader. Um, this couldn't be any more important. You might not think it is, but when the leaders lean on the back wall or like sit in chairs behind or stand up with their arms crossed, kind of like this, um, already the kids are not they don't think the leaders are engaged with what's going up on the like going on up front um so for the the kids to be sitting with their leaders a super super helpful and then if a kid's kind of whatever playing with their shoelaces or kicking somebody else you're right there within arm's reach hopefully a leader is within arm's reach to kind of be like hey watch watch or whatever right really quiet so that's the first thing that we would say. Um, the second thing is know everybody's name. And I know that's going to sound so basic, but I don't know how uh, many times just knowing a child's name, I'll be teaching and somebody will just be having a moment, right? They're distracted by something and I just have to say their name, Chippy. And then all of a sudden he's watching me again and he knows mm -hmm. that I see him and I didn't say anything mean. I didn't say it in a mean way. I just said his name and all of a sudden he's back. Um, so know the kids' names and don't be afraid to use that. You can just say their name. It doesn't have to sound mean when you say it. Sometimes you can say it mean too. <laughs> as long as they feel safe. As long as they feel safe. <laughs> <laughs> just joking. Don't say it mean, I guess. I guess we'll say that, yeah, right? For the yeah, internet, yeah. we'll say that. Okay. Um, also though, it's better, like if you're a small group leader and you're, you're not on stage or whatever up at the front and you're there, I know I do this whenever I'm anywhere else and I'm not leading. I am the most engaged listener in the room. I have found so many times when we'll be at VBS and say someone else is teaching the Bible study or someone else is doing songs up at the front. If I come in, people will turn around and look and see that you're there and they watch what you do. When you're a leader, they watch what you do when you're wearing that shirt. And so I am like laser zoomed in on whoever's at the front. I don't talk to anybody. When people come up and talk to me, I'll say, you know, like I know it sounds rude and it may seem rude to the person, but I really want to give the person at the front all of my attention because kids see that and they're like, oh, and they're redirected, they're refocused back at the front. So all teachers, if you're there and you have to talk about something, it would almost be better to leave and go outside with whoever for four seconds and have your conversation and come back in than for them to hear whisper, whisper, whisper at the back. That would just be my 
thought. Yeah, yeah. and it's a good reminder for us as oversight people. Like, I know sometimes you'll come into the room because there's something that you need to tell somebody quickly, or you think it's quickly. It always ends up longer than you expect. But it is. It's distracting, and the kids see it, and we just need to set a good example, yeah. I think. Yeah. yeah, even for big church, right? Yeah, exa yeah. exactly. Yeah. So that's what I would just say that. Have be within proximity of kids. There should be like a, like I'm looking over here, by the way, because we're in the yeah. truth secret. No, we're in the Journey Kids room right now. <laughs> so I'm looking at where they'd be sitting. I'm imagining them. I miss them. <laughs> um, but if you have a leader interspersed, sprinkled throughout them, nobody's going to go off the rails in any direction too long without somebody giving them a tap or saying their name or whispering like a little, watch the front or whatever. I hope you heard that. I don't know if you can hear that. But anyway, um, so I think that that's it. Okay. Last one. Oh, and then beyond that, I've never had a go beyond that. I mean, I've never, I think yeah. only in very special circumstances have we had a small group leader maybe have just take a kid out into the hall to kind of work through something or they need a break or they needed to go to the bathroom or whatever, yeah. whatever it was, or they just needed a reminder. So anything more than that is more of a special case and we'll deal with that, but maybe not in this format. Yeah. 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 Just, I, I would say to that, don't forget that the oversight people are your friend. Like you yeah. need, that's what they're out there for. That's what they're kind of walking around and making sure that everything's under control. That's their job. If there's, if there's trouble in a classroom and you're having trouble, send a small group leader out to get uh, one of the mm -hmm. oversight people or one of the security people to get over an uh, oversight person because it, it's disruptive to have some child that's very disruptive and it happens so i remember yeah. i can ha remember very fond memories of blessed ryan chevalier um on oversight well i guess he was running cm at yeah. the time and spending a lot of time with the little guy in particular and i know that little guy loved him and mm -hmm. the truth was he was disruptive in the classroom but his reality that sunday morning was he got to spend one-on-one -on -one time with ryan yeah. and if you know ryan he's just the greatest guy in the world and the kid loved him yeah. and you might look at that and think he's in trouble, but that was good for his soul just to talk to Ryan and Ryan to listen to him. And he, yeah. But he needed to be out of the room because yeah. he couldn't handle being in the room. And that's okay. You know, we, wanted to be, we want kids to come here and like being here. And when they go home, we want them to be happy that they were here, right? Yeah. So. And know that they have a leader that loves them. And know that they yeah. have a leader that loves them. Yeah. <laughs> it would have been me who called their name yeah. in a mean voice. <laughs> yeah. Just joking. I wouldn't do that. Okay. What is a good way that we can explain the Trinity? <clears throat> Not my question. Thanks very much. <laughs> I know exactly who asked this question. You know who you are. Um, this is a great question, and it comes up all the time. We see mm -hmm. the wonderful thing about our Bible is that the Trinity just, I should pick three fingers here, they just are so interwoven throughout all of Scripture. There's so many verses that mention all three of them, mm -hmm. and there's so much interplay between uh, the three persons of the Trinity, right? God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And so it does come up a lot, and kids have questions about it a lot. You often refer to Jesus as God and as God's Son, right? And yeah. as the Son of Man sometimes. We'll read verses with that. And for some kids, if they're listening, they're like, what now? Right? Yeah. Like, that's, you said three different things. So it's helpful to, to be able to tell them something. If I was going to explain the Trinity to children, um, I would focus more on the roles of what they do in our redemption. I would definitely bother to talk about that because that's something I know I can say. It's there in scripture. And I know that they can get their heads around that. I've, I've talked to lots of kids about it and they're like, oh, I get it. Mm -hmm. When you're trying to explain how it actually works, to me, that's still a mystery. We have a lot of imperfect ways to do that. So I will tell you some just because I've heard some. None of them are right really right but they're helpful they're helpful so you could talk about an egg right an egg has a shell it has a white and it has a yolk all three parts are still the egg right it's one egg but it's three different parts it's not actually perfect it doesn't actually do a, a like when you look yeah. theologically it doesn't actually do a great job <laughs> but kids that's okay for kids right you can talk about uh, water. So there's three states of matter for water, right? That kids are kids would know about. They would know about water, ice, and steam. Yet it's all water. Yet it takes these three forms, right? It's, that's probably the wrongest, if that's a word, <laughs> because God doesn't change from one state yeah. to another, right? Um, but kids do. When you say that to some kids who are maybe sciencey, they're like, "Oh yeah, I get that. It is all water, mm -hmm. but it is these three things." So it's sometimes helpful, not perfect. Um, I have heard the one about that you've got a man and he's a son, he's a father, and he's a grandfather. 
so he's a son to his father, right? He's actually a grandfather to his grandkids, but he's a father himself, right, to his kids. So he could be three different roles, right? And he's still one person, not perfect either. And there's like theologically, there's problems with that. But again, for a child, they could see, oh yeah, my dad is, yeah, he is a dad and a husband and a son to my grandpa. Oh yeah, I get it. Like they could get that, right? So that can be helpful if they don't think too hard into it. <laughs> they don't go to Bible college, just joking. Um, I've, the one I found best maybe, I don't know if it's best, is the three leaf clover. And I know that's so old school, but it's because the clover itself is one thing and yet there are three leaves. Mm. So I like that one because it is one stem, it grows out of the ground as one thing and yet there's three distinct leaves on the clover. Weak still. So here's the thing. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. When you think of it, we just, Shara sent me a wonderful video because she knew I was going to talk about this from the Gospel Coalition. Mm -hmm, yeah. And um, the man, man did a wonderful job about it. And he said, everybody is a who and a what. And so if you look at Chewbacca from Star Wars, Chewbacca is Chewbacca. That's who he is. And he's a Wookiee. That's what he is. Um, this, I said that because of kids. Um, if you look at Optimus Prime from Transformers, Optimus Prime is who he is. He's Optimus Prime. That's who he is. What he is, actually he's two what's. He's a truck and he's a robot. So kids would know that. Um, when you look at the Trinity, when you look at God, God is actually three who's. He's the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And he's one what? He's God. It's all God. Three persons, one God. Um, when we talk about their roles, I like talking about this with kids because this is something that you can say clearly and they can kind of understand. When you talk about when we were saved, it was God the Father that organized and uh, came up with the plan of redemption, the plan of salvation. So he uh, asked the Son, he sent the Son, it was him that initiated salvation. And Jesus, God the Son, is the one who implemented that plan. He's the one that died on the cross. He, he went through the actual living out of obedience to the Father and then sacrificially dying on the cross in our place. So he obeyed him even to death, death on a cross, right? So we are saved because of what Jesus did. And the Holy Spirit uh, works also to sanctify us and to bring glory to God, glory to the Son and glory to the Father. And he does that through working in our lives. So the, the Father gave us the Spirit and the Spirit is constantly giving glory to the Son and to the Father. And that is through helping us to obey, helping us to live out sanctified and saved lives, right? So we have the Spirit living in us. If you look at your catechism, um, the Holy Spirit is a promised helper who dwells within us mm -hmm. that was given to us by God. And he is helping us to obey and live a life of worship and obedience to God, like of submission to God. So um, when I have it written down here in this nice thing, it says, the Father creates a plan, Jesus Christ Christ implements the plan and the Holy Spirit administers the plan. Those are big words. I wouldn't use those words with kids, but just so that your understanding is there, that could be helpful to talk about what they do. It's also helpful, I think we hear about the Spirit the least. It's helpful to know He is a person. Mm -hmm. um, that's, you know, I, it's helpful for kids to know He is a person. He's not like, ooh, He's a person. Just like G they have no problem thinking of Jesus as a person. The Holy Spirit's a person too. And his job is to live in us and to help us obey Jesus and to worship Jesus, right? And to help us obey God. So, okay. I don't know if that was helpful. Do you think so? Yeah, I do. Okay, great. Uh, another question we had was, what should we focus on during small group time? So, um, the gospel, that's, that's probably mostly what small group time is about. Mm -hmm. Sharing the gospel with the kids and just getting to be with them in a smaller group, one-on-one, -on -one, um, seeing where their hearts are at and if they're ready for salvation. Um, go over the gospel ties, the story. There's um, Christ connections at the end of every mm -hmm. lesson. And usually what the main point in the um, small group sheet that I send out, it, usually the main point is a reference to that, mm -hmm. how the gospel ties into the story. And there's scripture there to go with that from mostly from what they've learned, but there's also learned that in that lesson that day, but also there's scripture um, that will, scripture references that will help you lead a child to Christ. So that's all there in that small group um, page that we give you. Uh, take prayer requests. The kids want to share their prayer requests. <laughs> they, you know, pray for my turtle. <laughs> we had, when we had the prayer request on the wall, it was so cute to watch because they had all these cute little prayer requests. <laughs> Pray for my brother's broken arm. Like they have, they had great things. <laughs> so I love to see what their prayer requests are and help them um, to think of bigger ones too. Like sometimes 
we forget that that's a teaching opportunity in itself. Like we can pray for our parents mm -hmm. to help them learn more about Jesus um, as they're upstairs in big church, those kinds of things. Uh, and encourage them, um, encourage them to learn the memory verse, go over the memory verse with them if you wanna do that. Uh, it's there as well, but we also have uh, the retelling page, so that just helps you answer or give them questions and the answers to those questions so that you're not stumped. <laughs> sometimes I think that that it is so helpful. I with think the some, yeah, I think there. sometimes small group yeah. leaders get nervous, like, oh no, I have to know all the answers to all the questions. All the answers are there, so don't ever feel intimidated by any of that. You are able to look at the sheet and have the answers, and don't expect the kids to have all the answers. Lots of times they'll sit there and go uh, what? <laughs> I don't understand the question. It's, it's okay to read the question and then read the answer to them and just help them understand yeah. what the answer means and what it is. It's really about guiding them to understand the story that they learned or the lesson that they learned earlier. And then uh, Jill wrote down, I, <laughs> I give out a ton of candy. I don't give out as much candy as Jill, although I would, eat, I would eat all the candy that Jill gives out. But I don't get yeah, out when as I much do as small you. Group, if a kid gets the right answer, everyone gets candy. Yeah, I would. I wouldn't done. do that. Yeah. I would only give candy to the kids it's that got win, the right win, answer. It's a win-win, yeah. win-win, win-win situation. <laughs> they like it. Yeah. It's why you spend more money, though. It's true. It's true. Yeah. <laughs> so I think that that um, did that answer all those yeah, questions. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And pray. We've been trying to do that with the kids too because we know that that for some of them is a gap because of COVID. Mm -hmm. um, they haven't been able to give prayer requests and then have their prayers answered. So we've been trying to call and yeah. ask for prayer requests for kids because we know they've got stuff that's on their hearts. Yeah. You know, um, I think that's a really real thing for them. And I think sometimes there's things that they share that floor you, yeah. especially in truth yeah. seekers, but even <laughs> older kids and journey kids, sometimes the things they say, you, you want to cry right there because yeah. you know that it's a burden on their heart, right? So And heavy, heavy. heavy Some of them stuff. are so heavy. Yeah. 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 Okay, then the last question was, are there any aids for helping kids to learn the memory verses? Um, yes. So the person that mentioned this actually hearkened back to VBS this year. And I don't know if you guys remember, um, for I've come down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me, John 6, 38. Ooh. So that is everything is awesome, right? By um, I can't sing. Just so you know, Shara should have done that. I don't know why I did it. It was a tactical error. It was good. Error. I liked it. Tactical it was error. good. No, but that was from the Lego movie. And we did that for that week of VBS. We picked five catchy songs. It was super annoying, I would say, two yeah. songs. They get stuck in your head. <laughs> On purpose, we did that. Um, and we put the five memory verses for VBS to those songs. And... We thought maybe we should do that again. This person who asked this question said that was really helpful. And I thought we can do that again. Well, lots yeah. of times when I'm reading the Bible with the boys, um, I'll come across a verse mm -hmm. like, Thy word is a lamp unto to my, my feet. feet. Like, I am. Yeah. Don't stop. <laughs> <laughs> like, onto my path. I know a lot of yeah. memory verses because of scripture and song. So I think... And you stop and sing it and they have to wait till you're done. They really yeah. do. <laughs> That's why I stopped because I know how much they yeah. don't enjoy it. But I'm singing lots at home, so maybe that's why. <laughs> so I think, I think singing is a super helpful tool. So we're going to do that for the summer. We are going to do June, July, and August. We will grab some catchy songs. June's already figured out and mm -hmm. we're gonna we'll do a separate little video it'll probably be five little over five minutes long that will explain the verse and teach you the catchy song for June and then you've got a month you can show it to them a hundred times if you want to that video on YouTube and they can learn June's memory verse that way we're also going to do some kind of a competition with it so we will launch yeah. all of that and explain that to you but that could help and we're going to test it through the summer so if it goes really well maybe then for the balance of the year mm -hmm. um, we'll do that up until December at least we'll try and do that and if that's helpful then I do know I bless Alyssa Cross she texted me one day and said, thanks a lot, Jill. I've been singing one of your memory verses from VBS all day, and I can't get it out of my head. And it was the Paw Patrol theme. So that's painful, yeah. right? And Shauna Lee sent me a video of some kids that were singing <laughs> memory verses from last VBS, uh, VBS too. Yeah. yeah, and she sent me a video of them. Doing it. <laughs> Doing it, yeah. So, so that, we'll do that. Yeah. We think we'll do that. Yeah. We'll get those two. Other suggestions for memory verse. If 
you have sung it or don't want to sing it. Um, one of the things is funny voices. Mm -hmm. So I know that I have kids do it and they do it underwater. So if we're going to do um, For I've Come Down From Heaven, the one that I just tried to sing to you. So you could do yeah. Right? Like, you can do it like that. And then we've done, like, robot. We've done yeah. southern. You should do that, Pastor Evan. Southern yeah. styles. Um, we've done pirate voice. You, the kids will come up with them, too, right? Yeah. So we've done rap version. It's always bad. Um, anyway, you can do it like that. And they like it, especially mm -hmm. if they kind of come up with the idea. Um, I've also done ping pong. So let's do John 3.16 ping pong just between the two of us. Okay. Do we know that? For God so loved the world that he, you get the idea. Yeah. <laughs> so you can go back and forth um, with the kids and you just kind of point to each side of the room and the kids go back and forth doing the verse ping pong. So there's not, also, well, I was going to say another one that I know my mom uses uh, when she teaches is she has every word written on a different piece of paper and she'll paste it all up on the wall and then she'll take it away and so right. it's a good memory or yeah, yeah. you know leave blank spots and yeah. like b-i-n-g-o but yeah. like yeah. <laughs> i-n-g-o but with the verse right <laughs> yeah helpful yeah um okay so what are some helpful big picture perspectives um i would just say to encourage you the bible is really one story um i there was a leader in particular who asked this and uh, they kind of got bogged down sometimes with the idea um, that there's a God of the Old Testament and a God of the New Testament. They don't believe this. They don't believe this. But they felt like sometimes um, the kids maybe come in with that idea that the God they see in the Old Testament is different from the God of the New Testament. And really, if we know and are constantly showing God through his word as one God, it's one God that loved us, one God that was willing to do the unthinkable to, see, to uh, secure our salvation, and who had that planned from the beginning, you know, um, I think that that's really helpful. And so... Um, I'm just trying to think if there's anything else I I was just going to say the gospel yeah. project that we use, the gospel project curriculum that we use, is very good at right. pulling all that together and always bringing Jesus back into the story the so that it, it shows them yeah, that, yeah. that God is the same God of the entire Bible. Yes, and yeah. I remember now um, what I was thinking. When we were talking about the Trinity, we answered the Trinity question first because it's important to know um, it wasn't just Jesus who saved us. And I think that um, even a mom was talking to me this week about that, and they said that they had been feeling like that, that, um, that God the Father was maybe a bit harsh, and that it was thank goodness for Jesus who saved us. Mm -hmm. And it's so important for kids not, and, and again, she knows that's not true, but sometimes we feel things like that, right? Mm -hmm. And so it's so important to message to kids clearly, right from when they're really, really little, God the Father initiated our salvation. He created that plan of salvation. And Jesus walked that plan of salvation for us. And the Holy Spirit now is the one that even um, enables us to be able to grab onto faith, right? Like through the gift of faith. And so that's an important thing to be able to message to them all the way through. That the God that we see in the Old Testament is a loving God that is the same God that sacrificed his son in the New Testament to save us. Um, and that's, it's all one big story. And truthfully, everything really points mm -hmm. to that, like, yeah. that center. You know, when we had Easter and Good Friday, like, it all points to that. That was, like, history changing, right? And so when I'm teaching on those videos, I'm always, every week, I'm talking about where do we see Jesus in this? How do we see it in the life of the character? How do we, what has God done in this story to show us his coming Messiah? Mm -hmm. And I can't ever go a week that I can't find that. Like, yeah. it's always there, yeah. so. Um, Last one, you. Yeah, what are some resources that we can use? Okay, so we have come up with some modules. <laughs> how to prepare and teach a large group lesson. Uh, how to share the gospel was module two. Then you did the Easter lesson, uh, an example of an invitation and prayer for salvation. Those you can find all of them on um, our Cornerstone YouTube channel. I actually looked again today and they're, they're all still they're there. They're all still there. They haven't taken them down. And then we'll have this one that you can keep referring to, this lesson that you can keep, module that you can keep referring to. So I think that that will be helpful too. So to, as a takeaway, thank you. If you're, a listen, if you're like a leader that is still listening at the end of all of this, Thank you very much for all that you've done already. If you're considering being a leader, um, that's the Lord. We definitely need you. Mm -hmm. The requirement for that, I mean, beyond the screening and stuff like that that we have for insurance reasons, the requirement for that is that you love the Lord yeah. and that you, you want to 
tell kids the truth. Um, that's the requirement for that. You don't have to be good at anything. Yeah. Don't ever um, be intimidated. I think yeah. that that's, I think that's what scares people the most is that you have to have all these big qualifications and it's true. Just love the kids. Yeah. Yeah. Love the kids and love the Lord and, uh, God works through you. And the truth is too, we're all very different people as grown ups, Um, and there's a whole spectrum of personality types mm-hmm. and interest levels and stuff. And there is always, I've seen it so many times where you'll have a leader that may be different for whatever reason, they're into something or personality or whatever. And there's always a kid there that gravitates oh, yeah. to that leader. Yeah. And without that leader being there, that kid would have felt out of place and yeah. like he didn't have a person, you know? Yeah. And so just say yes. Okay. I'll pray and leave. Yeah. Dear God, I just thank you for anyone who's uh, still watching Lord. We just thank you. Uh, We pray a blessing on leaders. Those that have watched, those that haven't, God, we pray uh, your blessing on them as they're home right Mm -hmm. now. We pray a blessing on parents as they are right now the principal teacher in their children's lives. And God, I mean, they always are the Mm -hmm. principal teacher in their children's lives. Mm -hmm. We're so thankful for them, for the devoted families that we have at this church, God. And we just pray that you would be with them. We pray, God, that um, they would have joy and great just success and excitement over finding you in your word and what you've given us in your word to know about you, that all of that would just be a blessing to them. Mm -hmm. God, I pray this would have been helpful. And uh, we just ask that everything that we do here at this church in CM would honor and glorify you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, bye. Thanks for watching. (laughs)